Okay, so Michelle is here, and we are scheduled from 12 to 1 o'clock to finish up um, the loose ends on S54. Uh, there have been a lot of emails going around over the weekend to try to make sure uh, that we have com uh, adequately, Understand. completely covered the deficit issue of the initial spending on the regulatory <laughs> board. Yeah, and then there was some work regarding the prevention activities, both in the F fund with the 6% sales tax and within the general fund with the 14% excise tax. So Michelle, whom we owe a lot of thanks to, worked probably much over the weekend and dreaded our emails. <laughs> so we really, we really thank you. And maybe you can have Friday off. I don't know. I thought it's probably not. Oh my God. I'll go ask Lou. <laughs> But thank you, Michelle. And sure. So we're going to go over the committee amendment, and then I have one other little section that if the committee accepts it, we would put it into one amendment that we would bring to the floor. Is that all right with everybody if we bring one instead of doing them in sections? That's fine. One, one has to do with prevention, and the other has more to do with the um, addressing the formation of the board and addressing the, the debt. Um, no? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So have yeah. the deficit. Well, we need to wait to see what we need to see. I was going to say, I, okay. All right, well, um, so for the record, Michelle Child's Office of Legislative Council, and I have up on the I, on the uh, on the web page, there's two things. You, you have your amendment, but I also did kind of just a guidance document which shows like if you were doing almost like a strike all section so you can see language because sometimes I think it's, I know you guys are pros at this and looking at and trying to fit it in, but because the underlying amendment is 95 pages, I thought it might be easier just to look at that too. But is it guidance um, document? Sorry, is that guidance document looks like no. this? And so what I did is I excerpted the sections, and I don't know which you prefer to go through. I can go through this one maybe first and give you a general overview, and then we'll look at the actual amendment. Um, so the first change, if we're looking at the guidance document, and you'll see that when there's highlights, I just highlighted when there's changes. If it's strike through, it means it's gone. It's HG, it's House Government Operations language that's being struck. And italics means that's new appropriations language. So the first change is in section two uh, with regard to the board, and that is changing the board from a chair and four members to the chair and two members. So you'll see that first change. Similarly, on page two, section three, and this is on implementation of the board. And so because you have to stagger the terms at the beginning so everybody doesn't roll off at the same time, um, you have this implementation language. And again, that's just changing it so that the, instead of having four members, you now have two members in addition to the chair. Next change is in section five. This is where the Canvas Control Board is to report back to the General Assembly regarding the fees. So um, remember, you guys are the one, the legislature setting the fees, not the board, but they're gonna come back and make recommendations. And so in section five, in subdivision two, it talks about the fees that they're gonna recommend to the General Assembly. And you'll see the new language down there at the bottom that's highlighted is that when they're recommending those fees and they're to be looking at Massachusetts as a guide and they can recommend fees that are lower or higher provided that they're designed to provide sufficient funding to meet the regulatory needs of the board and then you're adding language and retire the uh, and retire and retire uh, <laughs> the deficit sorry this went through editing but it'll go through again I guess uh, <laughs> and retire the deficit in the fund by the close of fiscal year 2025. Section six is just changing it from five full-time board members to three. Section six B, the appropriation. Um, that of eight, uh, 810,000 appropriation was came over from the Senate with a three-member board. When House Government Operations increased the board back to five, um, they didn't change the appropriation knowing that it was gonna come here anyway, and so they just left that. So. Um, so the 810 was originally, so last year when the Senate passed it with three members, they put in 810, and, Se and Stephanie's done a recalculation and says it should now be 860. Even with a three member, okay. Yeah. You would have had to put, if you stayed at five, you would have had to put in a million fifty. 
So the Senate um, number for the three minute board was too low. Was well, I updated it just a year ago. You know, it's oh, okay. <laughs> Not so we calculated based on new yeah. information. And to be clear, so eight sixty versus one five, so was, about one hundred ninety thousand. Well, just, no, yeah, about 110,000. 140, 190. Yes, 190. You're, you're right. Ooh, ooh. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> to, add two numbers. <laughs> to, yeah, about $100,000 a number. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit less than a full year. In the, yeah. Takes a little, so that, eight, that 860 does not represent a full, a full year cost. It's a, oh, it's I think it's a, like a 10 month cost. Of, so it's a 10 month cost. It, it, I assume it gets ramped up relatively quickly, but it's not a full. Yeah because it's going to take a little bit of time at the beginning of the school year to get it all. And the cost of the five-member board was 1.2, you said? Was, it was mm -hmm. 10 would be the first year and 1.2 after that. So. 1050? Okay. 1050, yeah. 1050, yeah. just under 200,000 dollars for this three-member board. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, uh, next change is uh, top of page four, and this is on the contingent uh, offset, and uh, so this is kind of paired with the idea that the, you're directing the board to recommend fees that are going to retire the deficit after four years, and so you want to tweak this, section C, um, so that you're bumping that out, so that uh, if at the close of uh, FY 2025 there is still any deficit, then you would use some of the monies um, in the, from the excise tax to, to backfill. Any questions on that section? Okay. Uh, next is a uh, new section, section uh, 6E, and this is a repeal of the Cannabis Control Board. Um, and so this would be uh, July 1st, 2024. And this is uh, so you would, if you would have the first licenses being issued um, in the first half of um, calendar year 2022. Um, and so you would have a little bit of operation of the board. You have, just as a, uh, just to refresh your memory, you would have the auditor's report coming in November of 23 to the General Assembly. So you would have that information with the idea that in, uh, starting in January 2024, the legislature could take the, the auditor's report, consider the report and what you want to do, whether you want to continue the board in its existing capacity or whether you want to make tweaks based on the auditor's report or whatever it is that you want to do. And so this is um, just kind of a mechanism. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, technically, you know, if it just went into effect without you doing anything, it's going to cause a hot mess. But I think you guys are aware of that. So I think that's also it's the point, which is to come, is to ensure that, that the legislature is going to be taking a look at this at that time. Um, so this would be repealing those particular sections. Okay. And then uh, section 22 is just tweaking the effective dates, and this is um, to just reflect the changes that you made by bumping things out a little bit earlier on. And so I've just tweaked those. And so if you look at the amendment, you'll see, I'll just walk you through quickly. So first is the uh, in first and second amendments are uh, with regard to the number of board members. The third instance of amendment uh, is to add with regard to the recommendation of fees and retire any deficit in the fund by the close of fiscal year 2025. Fourth instance of amendment is amending the number of board members again um, with regard to the creation of the positions. Fifth instance of amendment is amending the appropriation for the board. Sixth instance of amendment is uh, changing, bumping out the dates for the uh, deficit offset. Seventh instance of amendment is a placeholder for right now, and that's something that um, that members were working on with some other folks uh, with re uh, with respect to um, 
the uh, Ed the Ed Fund, and that will be forthcoming. And um, after I get done talking about this amendment, I was thinking maybe Stephanie can talk to you about what you guys have decided on that. Anthea Dexter Cooper is downstairs writing that, and then I will go um, and incorporate Representative Toll's new amendment into this one if everybody is in agreement. Um, eighth instance of amendment is the repeal of the control board. And then the ninth instance of amendment is just the effective dates. Any questions on these pieces so far? Okay, we'll get review of the seventh. Yeah. Uh, Chair Teresa Marty? Can you, can you put up the kitties? Yeah. Um, so we say clearly that the, um, the board shall set the fees sufficient to uh, provide for the duties of the board and retire the deficit in 2025 and then later um, we are that the you know, proceeds in 2026 will go to um, to close out the deficit um, but it is it is that enough in terms of what happens going forward so if the if the board um, if the fees well two things um, I mean, I, I think somewhere else it says that the that the board will sort of regularly regularly review the fees. So I would assume that they would after the after that point they would probably be reviewing the fees. But is it clear going forward from what's in here that the um, that if there's a continued deficit by the board that the uh, that they would turn to the ta the excise tax to pay that? No, this is just this is kind of a, a one time, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a one time payoff of the deficit, but you do have the sunset of the board itself right. that will be generating a lot of conversation with about That's the board. Nice and so you'll be you'll be seeing as you go along um, in 22, 23, and 24 what the deficit situation in that regulatory fund is. There is a the hard payoff is the get to balance. What happens to keep in balance in the future is another conversation that you'll be making sort of in tandem with all the, the future of the board. That's why the check back with the board. Right. And the board's going to be, they've got so many things they've got to come back to y'all on every every year. Um, so I imagine it's just going to be an ongoing, a continuing conversation um, okay. about those fees. Instead of just relying on the auditor's um, report to decide to make the legislature act um, the sunset really makes the legislature okay. or not they just let it go <laughs> <laughs> Marla, uh, can you give me some uh, information on why the suggestion of reducing the number from five to three is it simply a money saving measure or is it thought that we don't need five bodies and that three bodies is sufficient for the you work on that? well it, it was a cost control. I mean, if you look at the cost going forward, the fees, there is a concern that it will be impossible to raise the amount of money necessary in fees to cover the cost of the board. You could raise them a lot, but if you raise them too high, people will not voluntarily come into the this market, they'll stay where they are. Where they are. So, do so we have an analysis of that? I mean, I know we have some analysis of what the market may be. Um, did part of Graham's um, background data give us an idea of how many players there might be, and if you know a fee of five thousand dollars, or ten thousand dollars, or two hundred dollars, how that all might play together to bring up enough to to finance the board? So the 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 projections that Graham made around the excise tax, that band of high, medium, low, right. was not, you know, he wasn't forecasting a specific number of, of participants in, in each level, you know, growers, wholesalers, retailers, et cetera. He was scaling what he thought the size of the Vermont market would be based on population and incidence to the comparable states that have the, the legal consumers. Yeah. But, um, but as I understand it, the, yeah. the regulation special fund was going to get its money from licensing. It is. And, and so and was that, there a calculation done so of what we, how many licensees you would need in order to raise this no, amount? No, just a look at just really primarily look at Massachusetts yeah. and what their fee structure was and what they were generating fees. 
and saying if we scale Massachusetts on those same bases of population and incidence to Vermont, that's it, you know that's what we think is the the most likely. And if the language is still in there. This is no lower than you know something that's comparable to Massachusetts. And so that was our estimate of the 650. If you were if you were targeting a fee structure that was similar to Massachusetts, but given the size of Vermont compared to Massachusetts mm -hmm. and our existing already. Mm -hmm. Legal. That it would bring in 650 more. It's 650. The, the direction to the board in this amendment is to cover your costs, which are now 860 at a three member board, and to retire what's this, probably going to be something like a $1.8 million deficit or a little bit higher um, when they start establishing those fees. So um, that was the, you, when you get to four years out and you have a three member board that's running at a 900 or so thousand dollar a year right. cost estimate that's a lot closer to 650 if that's if that's if that if the board may be able to raise the fees higher but the, the structure is the board comes back with a proposal of fees and you're giving them the the sort of guardrails of where to propose the fees at and um, it may turn out that they can come up with a fee structure that covers their cost and pays off their deficit or maybe they can come up with something that covers their cost but doesn't pay off the deficit because that's a, you know, those, those are all to be determined as our best estimate of what's likely. Um, that 650 is a likely fee structure given our neighbor to the south. Um, but again, that's not even enough to cover the 860, much less the one point. Yeah. Uh, so elsewhere, where we are not touching it, it says the, ex, the receipts from the excess excise tax go to the deficit first. And then it's divided out in 2026. Right, but it sounds to me on an ongoing basis that the ongoing costs are six, or the ongoing income is projected. But the license fees projected are at 650, and the cost of the board is 800. You're still not. But you also have that hard sunset on the board with the auditor's report coming back saying, should the board remain three full time state employees? Should it change? So you will have a impetus with that hard sunset to review both the structure and the cost of the board in that in that time frame that you've set up. I would just worry that we're still setting it up to not make enough money to cover. Not if you it, it, unless we charge really, really high fees and there are people that are concerned about that, that you still won't have enough to cover the board. And that that's a possibility if if you eliminate the sunset and change nothing. That's There's a lot of probabilities of things along the way. You set it up so that you're actually forcing the yourselves and the agencies to actually continue to look at these questions along the way. So, Stephanie, you said something that yeah. has me concerned. I had understood that the first dollar in that's right on the excise that's goes right. to paying the debt. That's right. In twenty twenty six. No. Every dollar in it goes to paying the deficit. Yes. First. But with the receipts that start in FY twenty six, the excise tax will start coming in in twenty three and twenty four and twenty five, but in twenty six is when the first dollar of the excise tax, you will know what the deficit is at the close of 25, and the first dollar of the 26 excise tax is what goes to pay the deficit. And that's, you know, the, the full mature. So that means we will start spending. You will start spending in, the excise tax ramps up, and so you will, um, depending on how big that deficit is, if there is one, you could be, you know, having a slightly higher spend in prevention and other things in 25 and having a slightly lower spend in 26 depending on what the projection is for excise tax in 26 over 25. The only reason I wanted to pull the date out was to give us a chance to raise more in fees. Yeah. But I had always understood that we the first dollar in on the 22nd FY22 would pay, begin paying the deficit because there is a deficit that year. I thought that's what that language around the excise tax says. So, in that, so I'm confused. The, 
So it's not going to, I, I just want to clarify the question. So in FY22, we're expecting the excise tax to bring in 180,000. What? 180,000. Yeah. And those dollars will, will go toward the deficit or go 70 30 and park to prevention? So they would just go 70 30 mm -hmm. because the, you, you will, so you want to start paying off the deficit mm -hmm. sooner than you, your fee structure. Right now, I'm assuming that I'm trying to give you time to have a fee structure come back that might be higher than the 650 that we're projecting. And so if you're, you're saying you don't want to, you only want to spend in anticipation in your, the, the question of whether the 180 is there in 2022 will be a function of the forecast. You know, if, if the, it's our best estimate right now, but that's the, so, you know. So the way it is written now in 22, 23, and 24, yeah. the full 14% will go to the 70-30 split. Yes. Okay, and so you see, on, uh, in that, I had it being paid mm -hmm. off in 23 and whole. It would be. And, and that, that's what it, under the old timing. If you look at what I have up here, so you can see the existing or the government operations language has it. So what Mary was saying, which is that at the she, what she understood is that at the close of FY22, then the 23, and then in 23, you start using that excise tax. So that's correct. But then you bumped it out along with the oh, fee yeah. stuff, with the fee provision. And I'm going to so, say something in a different way, too. What you're saying, what you were suggesting, Representative Cooper, sounds like you're actually dedicating whatever is necessary for the regulation yes. fee from excise along the way. And then you're sort of taking away any sort of impetus to actually, even though you say you have my cost, you actually really not built up any debt. You're not building up any actual deficit in the fund. So you have to build up the debt. I, I don't get, and that may be, maybe that's no, probably better. It was never my intention to, that we would stretch out payment of the deficit until 26. It was always my understanding that, I, and I thought that was the way, way 7901 was written, and that's the reason I said the first dollar in of the excise tax is dedicated to paying the deficit whenever it comes in. And I thought it came in, you know, beginning. Well, you, you close a year and you know where your fund is. And then you, what you would be saying is that the close of every year after yeah. FY22, you would have the deficit in the fund and then you would dedicate in the next fiscal year the first dollars to yeah. reduce that. And that's, that's an option you can do. It does, in my, I, I want to think about it a little bit, but it does, at the same time, you're saying to the board, bring back a thing that covers the deficit, but you're not creating a deficit, so they're never create, they're never coming up with fees to cover the deficit. Well, I don't know. <laughs> we don't so, know that. So, if, <laughs> you're, you're trying to get them to create fees that cover their costs, mm -hmm. recognizing any past buildup of, of forwarded money in that special fund. Yeah. And when you start to pay off that sooner, then it, it becomes a little bit of a tricky, how do you, when do they know what deficit amount to try and shoot for in the fee structure? Um, so we have to set up the regulatory board. The cost yeah. of the regulatory board will be evident in year? Well, it's evident well, year 21 right now. Three-member board, 860. But, but, when, but when will we actually have the, the, defi the deficit that the fees? Right off the bat, you're going to have 860 in the, you're giving yeah. 860 in spending authority against yeah. zero receipts. So they'll have that deficit when they start out with. And then they'll have, uh, we're hoping that we have about $500,000 of fees with the forward mm -hmm. medical marijuana piece in by the mm -hmm. end of 22. Um, and so hopefully the deficit grows only for about $600,000 or so. Um, from the, to the next year, um, and you can start to pay off. If you have a deficit in that fund of 860 and 300 the next year, you're paying off, you know, a million one two out of the excise tax. But they're coming back with the fee schedule to, to pay off to cover those costs. To cover those costs, or do they cover them after anticipating the payoff of the deficit? Because you're, you're setting it up in a kind of a funny way. Well, the my expectation was that the fees would be set to cover the actual costs of running the board. 
there is this problem of will that make them too high? And so I don't know yeah. how to how to juggle that. So that's kind of one set of problems, but it was never my intention to defer paying off the deficit. And again, I had always understood, it's the reason I stopped fretting over this this weekend, that the first dollar of the excise tax in would go after the after the fees are paid, the first dollar would pay the rest of that cost of the board. The the cost of the board or the deficit in the fund? The, Cost the deficit in the fund, which is the cost in the, of the previous between the, the fee and the, the previous the years. Yeah. 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 That was the goal. And my, then, my goal. yeah, and so that would could make sense for FY23. So you close FY22 where it is because there's no there's nothing that'd be done in 22. You don't have any um, fee revenue in, in 21. Um, you you close 22. You have a fee structure in place in and at the close of 23, at the close of 22, you have whatever's accumulated as a deficit in the special fund, and then first dollar of FY23 pays off the deficit, and that structure stays in place annually thereafter. Um, and that could be one way of. So that would you would just be then leaving the, the so you would was. just go back to the way it was for house government operations, but because section 6c is only one time you'd have to uh, tweak it to say and, and thereafter any anytime after, that yeah. happens you are gonna yeah. you're gonna do the offset fiscal year any close future fiscal year that has a, has a and so you you sort of de facto would have set up with the fee no matter what the fee schedule is um, if it's less then excise is going to pay it off the top the next year yes does anybody around the table need a chart of when the fees kick in, when the deficit is, what pays off, when the excise tax do I, I, or are you all here? I'd like to see it. I, just like I, to, I think we need okay. a, a, a longitudinal. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll update that chart for the three-member board, okay. and that'll show it. Okay. Did you have questions about, Marty, about the three-member versus the five? The Senate well, had a three-member board, right? and the House proposed a five-member board. Because they wanted more diversity, or because they thought there was a lot of work to do, or they needed more members, or... I mean, I, I, I think I can, why. yeah. Um, so when it came out, in the, when it was originally in the Senate, uh, in Senate Judiciary, they had it as a five-member board. But concerns about being able to have enough fee, this issue around how you income. come at, you know, the right fee amount, um, and is that once it got to Senate appropriations, they scaled it back to a three-member board out of concern that there just wasn't going to be enough money generated by the fees. And so then it came over to the House, and then when it was in House Government Operations, they had the same concerns as Senate Judiciary, was, which was that there's a lot of work for this board to, to, to do, and their concern was that if there were only three members, if somebody needed to be out or something was going on, that it, that it, it might hamstring them in being able to, to meet their goals. So it was, um, they were looking at the functionality mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. left it up to you guys to figure out the money. <laughs> Kimberly? So could there potentially be a middle road through that by changing the salary structure? Because right now it's pegged to judge X or Y, right? So you just change that salary structure and then you can have your five. You yeah, might be able to make the numbers work. Uh, my concern is the issue. That, yeah. And that yeah. was, they discussed that quite a bit in the Senate about that, and it was in different places. I, you know, and I think just the concern is about, um, you know, who are you, who are you able to attract to the board um, with the, with the, with the, with the lower salaries. So back to the three versus the five member board, um, the amendment on the, in front of us, has a three-member board, how many of who would like more information regarding three versus five and in, in the functions of in the function of the board and, and how they would run three versus five. We have to remember there is an advisory committee of 12 individuals who are all specialists in different areas that would supply um, that are there to support and bring information forth to the board as well. 
if, if I may, in my conversation with the chair and vice chair of GovOps, they were not concerned about dropping it from five to three. They, in fact, anticipated that we would do that. From the policy. Uh, I'm not so concerned about the number per se, as long as whatever work needs to be done gets done in a timely manner and with the right people with the right expertise to do it. I am concerned that I think the fees that they charge need to cover their expenses, irrespective of whether they're too high or not. If there's work that needs to be done and we're setting up this system, I think the fees need to cover it one way or another. And I, I can understand we start out with we start out in the hole because we don't have any money. But that the, as the fees come in, they need to be set in such a way that they cover the cost of the board and make up for the two years that you didn't have any fees in the first place, and, and stretch it out for five years or whatever you have to to make that happen. And there's also the look back where when we look back at the board, the board may not continue as a full time board. You may just have the executive director and that the other three members would drop to per diems, and that would be, that would be decided yes. by a legislature, yes. future legislature. But in that regard, it would not reduce the fees, just because no, the board the fees, no, 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 but the fees would be more apt to cover <coughs> the board if they moved to per diem and, and not full-time positions. Possible. Yes. Mary. Marty, your concern was precisely mine, and that's the reason I several people through contortions on Friday trying to figure out. And that's why we came to this, mm -hmm. except then, see, I misunderstood mm -hmm. the consequence of it. Um, but I, I agree with you, but where I finally landed is it seems to me there is so much unknown about how this thing is going to work. I've talked to some people who are convinced we can set a decent fee rate for kind of the small producers, you know, the people that maybe we want to incent, but for larger ones, you can set it very high, and, and that may be enough revenue to help cover the cost. And, the, you know, all of that is speculation. So at the end of the day, it just seemed to make sense that let's, let's ask them to look at it and come back back to us with a proposal for hundreds. I understand that it's that it's unknown and we could set fees and we think they're okay and discover later that they're not and then you face the issue of do you raise the fees and what does that do to this market that's been established is that screw it all up or whatever but then my concern would be where would you come up with the money to act well and I certainly wouldn't want it to come out of either the excise tax that we're sending out to the general fund for other purposes that we think are going to be impacted by this bill or just plain extra general fund. Or you raise the excise tax. You, 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 you could do that, but that might I mean, that's a decision the market as well, you know, yeah. depending on. I know there are lots of unknowns, although certainly we've seen other states work with this. But our population is much smaller than places like Washington and Colorado that generate lots of money. And that got out of the gate first to oh, make some big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, I'll just second that thought that my concern was the same as Mary's and yours, um, which is why we tried to work on, on that amendment, um, and was why I asked the question about is it clear what happens going forward about whether or not the excise fee kicks in, because because I, I want us to set it up so that the, it, it's clear that the board has to uh, establish the fees in a way that is sufficient to support the work of the board, the responsibility of the board. Um, the only, but but getting back to this, whether or not you spend the first dollar of the excise tax on making up the deficit, you know, the only way that I can see that you could do that and still require, so my, I think both of our interests have been to say that yes, the, yes, the um, fee structure should cover the cost of the board but the board has been in existence for a little while, or the costs have been there for a little while before the fees start to roll in. And we, and we wanted to make sure that the, that the fees actually covered that initial cost as well as the cost of doing the work going forward. The only way I can see that you could do that and have the excise tax pay it is to, is to make a projection about what the deficit is going to be and say that the board will establish fees to cover the cost of the board 
and the projected deficit as of 2000, whatever the number is, whatever year it is, and have a number, a projected deficit of $1.2 million or whatever. So that when they set the fees, they know that they have a, a four-year period or whatever the number we pick to um, have the fees be more than the board costs in order to cover that. And that way, it's sort of paying, it would be paying, and then the, that extra money would have to go back into the general fund. Right. You'd be repaying the general fund for the excise tax that had, that had gone in to pay off that deficit. So, Stephanie, speaking from JFO, what did you did you hear Chip's proposal? I, I know you were working. With <laughs> That's okay. You know, <laughs> I, I, it sounds like we're going to have to have a conversation outside of the group right here, and I'm going to have to try to reiterate that a little more clearly than I just did. But um, because otherwise, and Stephanie pointed out all the. What seems to me the issue is if you start saying that the um, excise tax is going to, as soon as it starts rolling in, it's going to pay off the deficit, then there's no there's no, there's no incentive to have the fees do that. Right. You know, That's the fees. So you do have. Like a, I mean, other than the fact that we tell them the excise tax. Yeah, excise tax. Right. Yeah. So you do have the language saying that when they're making the fee recommendations. And, and building out for the for the second and third year rollouts that they're to be looking at those fees to meet the cost of the board and also retire any deficit in the fund by the close of FY25. That way, because the way that it, the way, or, you know, I understand that you don't want to bump that out. You're, you're saying you don't want to bump it out and you want to fill it earlier. But um, I'm just trying to, so you you have something to it to address the issue of saying you know you have to build in those costs of filling the deficit in addition to covering the costs of the board in your amendment right. now. I'm just but saying that in order to do it the way and to get the the um, outcome that Mary wants, I think you're just going to have to pick a number. You're going to have to say the projected deficit of so and so many dollars, and then. The fee structure will be created such that it would pay that back over four years. Yeah, if, we go, if we go down the roll of, the four years of the, pay back. Oh, okay, yeah, whatever yeah. number we pick. Yeah. But I don't. Well, I, um, I don't. You know, I think the issues that we talked about about raising the fees so high, if you shorten that, I mean, you're starting to make that a bigger and bigger problem. So I want to move on to the Second yeah. Amendment because we have Act 250 coming in at, at 2 o'clock. And um, there may be a small group of you that, that move from Act 250, that are not yeah. for the Act 250 and work on uh, this piece. But I want to move to the other amendments regarding the substance misuse prevention funding. And maybe this would be an easier amendment than what <laughs> I'm hoping. And, and, and I would recommend, if we agree to this, that we put it into one amendment from yeah. uh, the committee. The seventh instance. In this, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, this is the seventh this is instance of oh, the placeholder for, for the one that uh, you were working on with Anthea. Um, the education piece. Yep. Um, do, you, do you want me to talk about it? Okay. So, um, so what you have, just to, to refresh your memory, is you have in the House Government Operations Amendment, um, they, uh, at the recommendation of the House Human Services Committee, they created the Substance Misuse Prevention Fund. And then that's the fund where once there's excise tax coming in, there would be 30% of that revenue would be dedicated to that Substance Misuse Prevention Fund. This would, this proposal would strike those two sections having to do with creating the fund and then directing the monies to the fund and uh, create in session law. So section 18A, directing that 30% of the revenues raised by the excise tax shall be used for the purpose of funding substance misuse prevention programming as recommended by the Substance Misuse Prevention Oversight and Advisory Council. They are already statutorily created within the Department of Health. Last year we did that. And then uh, Section 18B uh, is that on or before November 1st, uh, 2021, um, and annually thereafter, uh, that council shall make recommendations to the General Assembly relating to substance misuse prevention expenditures, equaling not less than 30% of the cannabis tax. 
um, which shall be included in the officially adopted forecast. And then we had a hallway conversation, and now I've forgotten what it was, uh, about adding something. <laughs> about having, uh, in the 18B, having them uh, recommend whether or not a special funds needs to be created at that okay. time. Okay, and? Should it be not more than? Because we're giving them 30% to 37 split. Not less than. And wouldn't it be? So they, mm -hmm. the, the, the substance of, uh, yeah. use, the substance use mm -hmm. advisory council, um, you're setting the floor of what, from this particular source of funding for prevention. There may be, in their statutory structure, they report on all state funding mm -hmm. on prevention. So there may be other sources besides okay. Canada's tax okay. that Thank they you. want to spend prevention dollar okay. for prevention activities. But this is equally not less 30% of the Canada's excise tax. Okay. Right. They are only getting 30, so they couldn't. They can't use more, they but they shouldn't use less. less. They, there couldn't be any more, no, but they no. could choose to use less. Right. So why would we not less okay. than? I'm not, I'm not following you. Diane? Only because they're in the conversation. So I went and looked up who they are and what their duties are so, so that I could be more comfortable because I know like in my mind I wanted to go right directly to the prevention unit that does this work. So I don't disagree that this is not a good place because it's within the health department, but their charge is a significant portion of any new revenue generated by taxation of substance at risk of, of misuse, including cannabis, good tobacco, tobacco substitute, alcohol, and opiates be directed to fund substance misuse prevention initiatives throughout the state in accordance with the advice of this oversight committee, right? So I think that's a good placement of what we're trying to do. But they also have funds beyond, beyond what um, would be considered cannabis dollars. And so I would like to make sure that we don't that these dollars that are coming in from the 30%, it would be my thinking that, it, that there's a great deal of comfort in, in making sure that those dollars go to very specific prevention efforts around cannabis mm -hmm. use and not for, you know, um, tobacco so or not only that, but even not less 30% then, because that yeah. would be the full amount. Because they're, you know, their well-being of stakeholders also include the elderly and nutrition things. There's a lot of good prevention stuff going on, but for this money, I want to make sure that it's for that purpose. I think that's the intent of um, many who are okay with this. So you're good with this language? I'm good with this saying not less than the thirty percent. Okay. So that they make sure that they use it and not. And yeah, and not. You know, hang out with so, it. can I just clarify? There's nothing in here that says that this has to be used just on cannabis prevention. Right. This is for exactly. everything. Like what you're that's proposing what is, me, that, is that's what gives But me that's not about the not less. That's right. about just generally. The proposal right. from Human Services was that it go to substance misuse, but not earmarked specifically right. for cannabis. And the only thing that gives me comfort with that is that they have to annually, therefore, the, they have to come back with, with the recommendation of how they're going to spend that 30%. Okay, so Which you're not proposing to... It uh, says it went to where it's supposed to go, and so that they don't have the the authority to just use it in a different way without it, without us making sure that it goes there. It's not clear there, so somebody eight years from now could actually use it in a different way. But and anyway. we don't know what the need will be in eight years either. And, and That's so, right. right. And at so. the end of the day, this committee appropriates the right. money. Right. It's not, right. here's the fund, go do as you right. will. So, they'll have, so that little piece allows this body, which will have to remember that this 30% is for a very specific thing that's not really written in there. Right. So. Is, um, Peter? The, the officially adopted forecast, I know you're talking about the e-board, but it, it's not really obvious that that's what you're talking about when you read that. Is there another way to structure that sentence so that we can 
make sure that Yeah, I'll have to find out from Stephanie. She was just sending me some notes about 15 yeah. minutes before <laughs> committee started. <laughs> and I, was, I didn't even know what the forecast talk yeah. means. So. <laughs> you made a reference, the specific okay. statutory reference to the July and okay. January forecast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kimberly? Um, I just want to say that I am in favor of some agility and flexibility. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is, and I take your point and I'm not disagreeing, mm -hmm. but who saw vaping coming, right? Here were all these prevention programs run a certain way. We thought we had tobacco covered. We were patting ourselves on the back, and then along came vaping. And we just don't know what lies ahead. And so I believe that give, delegating to a body that has some flexibility in response, maybe it's meth is the big challenge. Maybe it's, who knows? And this is in the rear view mirror. So I personally appreciate the flexibility of having multiple lenses on this and potentially addressing multiple challenges that we may not around this table today be able to predict. Uh, Marty, did you hear I, I did. I, I understand that the substance misuse group looks at a much broader, or can look at a much broader thing, and that flexibility I think is important. I think some of the concern I have in reading this is that I thought we wanted to make sure that not more than 30% of the excise tax went to this effort. Yes, they can get other funds from other places, so that maybe this should say the expenditures, their expenditures don't include, include any more than 30% of the excise tax. Right back to the not more, yeah. not less. Not more, not less. Not more than not less. I mean, because they're talking about how much they spend, and, and their broad plan, yeah. income can come from other places than just the cannabis tax. I understand that, but I don't think we want, well, it's kind of the current structure. We have talked about 30% of the cannabis tax going to that purpose. But that's, that's, that's what you do in the first section. Yeah, yeah, the first section. And then this is just directing what, um, you could actually reference back to what's in 18A, how to spend the, the proceeds for the fiscal year in 18A. You know, instead of doing not less, right. not more, right. potentially. Just in 18A. Can we yeah. work on the not less than 30% okay. yeah. smooth yeah. out that language so it's not as it, it, Is that okay with folks? If you're in, 18, in Section 18A, you're saying we're dedicating 30% of the excise tax. Right. Mm -hmm. And then in 18B, you're saying advisory council, prevention advisory council, come back and how, give us your recommendations on how to spend this money. And instead of saying not more, not less in that 18 B section, how to spend the funds identified right, in 18 A. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I would, yeah. 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 Okay. And then one other thing um, that this language does, it does not um, create a special fund right. for uh, substance misuse prevention. And at that time, when, when, they, when the group comes back, when they do the report back, and make recommendations to the General Assembly if, if we want a special fund to keep track of what these expenditures are and how much we're spending and, and tracking the good measures because they're going to be the best programs with resulting in the best measures, we would have to, if you choose to, we could say they could recommend the creation um, of a special fund at, at that time when they come back with their initial recommendations. Mm -hmm. Because it'll have to be drawn from somewhere. Mm -hmm. When they come back with a recommendation, and I'm just following, you know, okay, we say, yes, go forth to do this. But then that money has to be placed someplace for them to be able to draw. From well, it could be in the general fund and just try to exactly. 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 It's So, our, we, so have we have to make sure that you, that you actually. You have two choices. Yeah, you can, you can, the way it is here, it, it'd be just 30% of that line item in the general fund is dedicated for prevention. Yeah. Um, you can direct this advisory council to come back at the same time when they're reporting on the first year that there's really mm -hmm. any significant money to investment prevention right. to also make a recommendation of whether or not a special fund is necessary. Yeah. Um, and it wouldn't create it, they would just recommend right. if they Exactly, want it. Yeah. if they need it or not. They may not, or they might, it's, it's a little, it's, it's not really. Or, you, you know, it, it, they, this, fund, this advisory council just got stood up this year, you know, it was something right. we passed last year. And so, by the time they're back in the fall of 2021, they might have a much clearer picture of the whole, whatever it is, this prevention landscape, direct, indirect, and a better sense of what a, what a fund would need to be 
because it includes the state police, it includes health department, it includes the commissioner mm -hmm. of education. There's a lot of a lot of high level people involved. So I'd ask the committee, you have a, you have uh, two choices here: either to leave it as it is, where the 30 percent goes into the general fund and just track it, rate as it is in the general fund or asking when this initial recommendation comes back that they also recommend whether or not a special fund should be created. It doesn't create it, it just says for them to reflect on it and give a recommendation. So leave it as is or ask for a reflection on the special fund. How many of you want to leave it as is? This proposed amendment? You're no, about? just that one piece. Just, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and how many of you would like them to recommend whether it comes back, uh, when it comes back, whether we should have a special fund or not? Can you vote twice? <laughs> one, two, three, four. Do I have everybody voting? One, two, three, four. And how many of you want to just leave it in the general fund? Because it doesn't mean that they can't, the way it is. No, they probably, they, they can, but they probably, wouldn't. Chances are they're not going to if, it, if it's not asked, you know, you don't specifically ask. Yeah, I'm not going to put it down. Rest of the minute. Okay. So leave it in the general fund. Is that the no. yes. or, Yeah, or no, no request of, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. We'll leave so, that so we'll, we won't have that piece. Okay. Okay. Somebody can bring it up true. some other time. The, the, no, I know we can share. They can share. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I think then, Stephanie, you work on that piece, and then we're going to have a small group that works on um, the initial conversation regarding how we're going to pay back the initial deficit and what the tax. Oh, I have a, I, I have a oh you want to show us the sheet? Okay. Yeah. Do we have? Are you on two fifteen? That's not an hour, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two. 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 Yeah. So we had two for this? I'm just waiting. So I emailed downstairs to see. Um, I think you guys, so can I just get a clarification? So on the toll amendment, I'm just going to tweak it with regard to changing the not less than 30% and talk about how the money is going to be spent from uh, through section 18A, and then I'm going to incorporate that into the committee oh, amendment. Okay. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Um, and then uh, and then there's one issue, and um, I'm guessing NP is not done with the amendment yet, but, but this is the issue about the ED funding. And Stephanie, did you want to just explain the concept so everybody can get decide whether everybody's on board? Maybe Maybe we need to stop Anthea from drafting it. I don't know. So there's a, uh, we're creating, I think, a new section in the bill that um, speaks to um, how the 6% sales and use tax within the Ed Fund is allocated for, I'm going to just say, expanded learning opportunity after school. There's a bunch of education committee words <laughs> to describe that spending. And then another section that has the ACE, what I sent to Anthea was another section very similar to what we just talked about here, where the, um, in the fall of 21, when there's actually significant um, sales tax revenue going to be forecasted to be in that sales tax line item of the Ed Fund, for the Agency of Education to um, fall 21 for FY23 budget, propose the grant program um, consistent with the you know, the, the, what, what the agency, what the education committee was saying, a grant program for these purposes. They would make the proposal about that grant program in time for the December 1st rate letter for FY23 that comes out. So you want that in November so that that money in the sales and use tax doesn't just automatically go to the rate structure, the, the, the property tax rate structure you want. You, you're putting the onus on the agency to propose the grant program from that portion of the 6% on the cannabis so it doesn't actually get tied up into the rate structure of the bill, of the letter that comes out on December 1st. That's the way I try to structure it. If it's yeah. semi-committed. Yeah, that it's, yes. Right. Exactly. <laughs> More than semi. <laughs> 
and that, that's a, you know, because that, that letter always comes out on December 1st, and you, you want to be clear about what's available in that letter for the final, you know, the initial rate estimate. And you don't, you didn't want this money to actually not be you know, available for the things you want it to be available for. So that's the, that's the idea that um, how it might need a little help with the actual words on paper, <laughs> um, which is what MPO is working on. Questions? Okay, we are going to um, send it to you. Um, this is just an update of the, the sheet I've given you earlier, and what I'm showing. Um, I'm, I'm going to go downstairs and update the amendment. I didn't do that. Um, That's all right. Just it is, yeah, that, that five member should change to three, and the date up in the corner after we should be changed to today. It's a hard copy that in. Um, but what it shows you um, is that instead of a two plus million dollar deficit at the end of 23, in this scenario, we're still thinking that the likely run rate is, is 650 on the fees. The, the excise tax um, amount, either on what you see on line A1 or cumulative deficit in yellow, those for the, in FY23, it'd be 1.7 in the Hooper construct of, of paying off the deficit. And then it would be about 300 to 400 a year at this three member commission coming off the top of the excise tax to support it. And the question is, is that um, the comfort level of having that construct and still having some impetus on the fees to make this smaller than it is <laughs> so in the negative number? <laughs> the fee would bring in the 650. And, it, in, yeah. and after we paid off the deficit that we know that we that you're, you're still in a three to four hundred thousand dollar right. gap. Um, in, in, in 23, we reduce the excise tax and pay it off as the bill yeah. as the bill uh, states. Yeah. But the question for the committee is: in 24 and 25, in order to get to a zero balance, the excise tax would have to put in three to four hundred thousand mm dollars -hmm. uh, to to make it whole. And the question is: if you raise the fees to 950 or a million, yeah. does that then change the cannabis tax base up above because you may not have as many licensed growers and sellers and yeah. and the other and the other thing to remember between 24 and 25 is when you're having the whole conversation you've sunset the board. With the board and you're having the conversation about the the framework and structure of the board it's, it's hopefully. Well, having that conversation. When you're going to sunset the board or, or? You're sunsetting it at the close of, of 24. You're, it's effect, the sunset is effective January 2024, but the actual um, mm -hmm. date of the sunset is June 30th, 2024. So it's the close of 24. You will be talking about it either in the 24 session and maybe a little bit in the 23 session if you're right. anticipating it or the board is bringing it up potentially. But you will have the auditor's report in November 23. You will have the trigger, the hard, hard trigger of the sunset on June 30th, 2024. So that, June to me, 30th, 24. 24. That means that your 2024 session will have this conversation happening in it. And what's our com comfort level with that? If, so the three-member board, you can see, is about a million dollars in cost if they move to per diems. That amount would be if we had the one executive director as a full time and the three per diems. Yeah. It would significantly. Yeah, if, if you actually, cross, it, it, that's not reflected in the 25 here, but if you did if you did drop the three members down, you would, um, to a per diem, you're, you're easily at about $300,000 of savings. It's more than that, a little bit, but you're, you're in line, um, you're well in line with the. The, the 650, if yes. that's what it ends up being. So it all depends on the decision of when the legislature sunsets the board, and if they choose to go to per diems, the fees should be fairly close in line. And if they don't, they would have to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. They would either have to, you know, sort of do this construct of permanently mm -hmm. dedicating some of the excise mm -hmm. tax to the to the function of the board, to supporting the function of the board, or. Um, or increasing the fees. Or increasing the fees. Um, <coughs> or changing the board in some other structure than it yeah. is. Yeah. 
So the key piece was sunsetting the board yeah. because it's the only way that the legislature is really forced to look back mm -hmm. at the cost of the board and the functions and, and the demands needed at that time. And if sunsetted and, and they go away, then that's a different problem. But if they go to per diem, the fees are pretty much in line. And if they don't go to per diem, then the legislature would have to act to either increase the fees or choose to use the excise tax or choose something totally different. Yeah, some other, something other than per diem, some other change that we're not thinking of now. Questions? It's clear having that in front of us instead of just talking. Yeah, yeah it just gives you a sense of what you're, yeah. Yeah, based on these, I mean, obviously these are all estimates and, you know, the hope is that the language you've put in to try and cover the full cost and the, and any built up deficit results in a fee structure that can be better than what we're projecting here. It's just, it's hard to, to hang your hat on something higher. Mary? Sunsetting it, as, as you just said, forces that conversation, and it, it, it not only just do we continue, but you know, yeah. how should it be continued? And so tying everything back into the sunset makes sense to me, including assuring that whatever deficit there is is paid off by that date. So they essentially are starting a fresh <coughs> at that at that point. They're, they're Zero in the fund balance. They're just everything. Is <laughs> so I'm just kind of working this real quick, so I'm kind of not as deep. So future question: Because the board may not be able to fund itself with fees, mm -hmm. right? Is that they could in the future they're going to sunset, and then the question will come back to us: Do we want to increase the fees? Do we want to pay the gap out of the? out of the tax itself, or other actions, reducing the board, doing something else, right? So that'll be the future question after the audit. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> other thoughts? It is the duty of this legislature to make changes when, when they're needed. I mean, that's what we're here for. If everything was just on a, uh, you know, a roller coaster, just go, then why bother to be here except to do things? And this is so new, we don't know what's going to... Well, that's part of the issue. We don't know in the estimates of the, the mid-range coming in, whether it's lower or significantly higher. Um, and, 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 and typically in the state, we, we don't take, quite often, taking the high range is more appealing because you, you have more money to work with. But as with the sales tax, when we moved it to the Ed Fund, we were very conservative with those estimates so that we wouldn't be... Um, caught short, yeah, and and just the, you know, and, we did that, okay. <laughs> correct. Well, except overall, the the estimates have run hotter than than what we have anticipated. Yeah. So, so notwithstanding the hundred eighty thousand dollars potentially in FY twenty two, everything sort of keyed to coming back in the fall of twenty one, and and by then there will be new estimates, and then they will have to be embedded in the forecast for FY twenty three by then. Um, you're and talking so, about the prevention use. Yeah, or, or, or just understanding what the, this world of, of excise tax and sales tax mm -hmm. will be two years down the road once the board is up and running. This is our best estimate This right mm -hmm. now. It may change a little bit, may change significantly if their timing is, is, is yeah, accelerated, if we see changes in the landscape around us. Um, but that what you've done in the other two amendments, having an entity come back and make a recommendation in the fall before the budget process starts seems to be the, the, the right way to go forward. That's our normal process. Then you are here with those recommendations in front of you and make the decisions that, that you normally make about funding. That's the way it flows, generally. <laughs>